Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the mobile app for QNAP's QVR Pro surveillance software. We're going to be testing out this um, app on an Android device, a Google Pixel 2 XL and we have already set up three cameras on the client desktop app of QVR Pro. So we're going to go straight in and we're going to load up QVR Pro the client. As you see I've already associated a NAS with this app but it's pretty straightforward indeed. We can go ahead and add a new NAS if we want. We can either add it manually if we choose. You can add the remote access name if you've set it up uh, with my QNAP Cloud or on the local IP, you can just enter the IP there. I've already assigned one in, nice and simple. And again, the application I'm using version 1.8.2, but I think there may have been a, mo a very recent update to this app as well. In the background there, you can find out a lot more setup information with regards to re um, resolution, if you're going to be using hardware acceleration, uh, that's using the resources of the client device. And again, this is quite a powerful phone, but I've disabled it here because I want to have an all-round even experience for all involved. And of course, there's the options there at the top to set up that remote QNAP ID too. But let's go ahead and go straight into QVR Pro, the client. And the first thing we're going to see is the feed of all three cameras. Now, prior to this, I have been mucking around with the network there, so we're going to see if some of that stuff has been identified on the log. If we choose, we look at all three cameras if we want here on screen all at once, and we can zoom into them if we choose, nice and simple, and again, find out more information about them. As you see, I've got my feet up on the desk there. Let's see what the time delay is there. I'm just going to wave at the camera. There we go, not too much of a delay there. And, of course, let's move that we can go through and have a look at some of the options. Now, first thing first, the camera that we are utilizing for this is a PTZ camera. So if we do want to enable pan, tilt, zoom, nice and simple. So we want to take a little look at this foot down here and also look at the disaster piece that is my office floor right now. There we go. And if you have a look slightly more to the side there, oh, other direction even, I forgot this is reversed. You can have a look at my to-do pile there of NAS comparisons waiting to be done. So again, nice and quick there all the way around. And again, depending on the camera brand that you are using, pan, tilt, zoom is still pretty easy there. And again, if you've got optical or digital zoom, they're all built in there. This is an optical zoom camera. So that's nice and easy and straightforward. We can come out to pan, tilt, zoom, have a look at some of the information in the background. There you can see the interruptions of me resetting my network there in the background there. And on top of that, if we want, we can take a live picture here. So if I wave at the camera, nice and simple, hand up and take a picture there. That is now a picture that's been saved to the NAS and my phone respectively. Now, um, again, we can go ahead and maximize screen that if we want or come out of it. And we can flick between the other cameras just by swiping the screen quite easily there. We can have a look at the resources as well as changing the stream priority. If you're using a dual stream camera, you can flick between them quite easily there. And of course, as mentioned, we can go into a lot of that stream and quality stuff as well. We can share uh, the feed if we want to send a link, a live link to another person. You know, in the case of an intrusion, that might be quite helpful. And again, we can come out of that multi-channel viewpoint if we want there, we want to look at the full screen feed. Again, these are options that are all there for you, but again, I quite like this nice lined up feed there. And again, we can flick between some of the other cameras. Um, this one's a far widespread camera there. You can see there on the corner, you, we can do a pinch screen. I'm gonna try and hold that up for you guys to see. You can do a pinch there with your fingers and you can go ahead and zoom in quite consistently all the way through all the way to the nice bit, just using simple hand gestures on screen there, as you've seen. So we're gonna zoom out there. Hopefully this will all come through in the recording. And if we go back, we can full screen that and go back to exactly where we were. Sorry, I've just accidentally flicked towards the other camera. You know, it's quite responsive, got to say. And again, all the same options are readily there. We've got a mute thing at the top right there because we don't want there to be a huge amount of feedback. We've made sure to disable that feature there at the top. And again, we can pause it if we choose. Go ahead and keep replaying it. Nice, straightforward stuff. We can even find out more information about those interruptions if we choose. So again, lots of nice, easy options there 
for setting these devices up. This is another PTZ camera, but we're not going to play with it this time. So again, but there are obviously limitations that I think we should talk about. First and foremost, you can't um, set much up on this app. It still is quite heavily reliant on utilizing a desktop client to set up a lot of the cameras and the alert. So, I mean, we can look at some of the event rules that we've created. And these are rules that I've already created, but we can't really delve into them. These are two motion uh, detection rules, but we can't play with them here, which is a bit of a shame. We can create a shortcut if we choose onto our desktop of our phone to automatically go into a camera. But again, this app feels like half of the puzzle still. It's a very good app, but it's still you still feel like you're only accessing half of the available uh, features and functionality during setup. You know, that giant multi-camera feed that QVR desktop client offers. And again, if you have created any other extra stuff or uploaded an e-map of your area, it's all visible here. But once again, you kind of have to set all that up on the desktop application. There's lots of information there with regards to system uh, resource utilization, cameras that are working, cameras that aren't. And you can find out more information all readily there. Going to overviews about stuff, the space that's being utilized. And again, this pretty good. We've got all the motion detection. I mentioned those three alerts and they're all triggering there in the background all the way through this video just throughout the recording. But once again, the fact that we, or we can view a lot of these things now, so this isn't me right now. This is just a recording from earlier. You can look at the time difference at the top of the screen. There's a lot of differences there that I think between the mobile app and the desktop app, this mobile, it would be nicer if, for example, I could add a fresh camera in case one of my cameras drops, or perhaps to be able to tailor the user interface in the same way I could do with the um, desktop application. A lot of that uh, roll up applications. And again, with a, if you have a, a much wider array of cameras than I do, then you can flick between them on that multi-channel display. More of those alerts seemingly happen as I wave my arms in the air. But this has been a brief review of the QVR Pro mobile app. What do we like? I like that it's responsive. It's incredibly responsive and the controls are certainly better than I've seen on a number of these apps. That pan tilt zoom, I like the joystick control. I think a lot of that is quite handy. I like the ability to sort of control this nice and simply. I like the pinch effect to be able to zoom uh, with relative ease. Nice and simple there to be able to just go straight in and out of them. But for me, that's still uh, the kind of the tip of the iceberg in a number of those. And again, that you can flick between live and playback view at the bottom. I didn't really touch on that enough. All the earlier recordings are still going to be present there. You can flick between the timeline on each of those cameras. But even then, going to playback and flick between earlier recordings it still could be better than I would like. And again, a lot of options there, but most of these are ones that require you to um, cater them in, um, you know, on the desktop client in advance and not directly on the app. But still, nevertheless, this has been that QVR Pro app. I like the functionality. I like how responsive it is. I don't like a lot of the options being removed um, and not available as you would find in the client device. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, click like. And if you want to learn more, click subscribe. We have already overviewed the desktop client, but we will be revisiting it for QVR Elite very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. But otherwise, I will see you next time.